else can I say? Oh my gosh, the taxis are terrible. So yeah, I mean, you know, coming to a country without your car and so we sold our car before we came here. So relying on taxis, uh, it's a nightmare. I mean, I could do a whole video on that. So yeah, be warned. Again, it's to do with comp lack of competition. It's to do with, you know, if you're a spoilt person like me who was born and, and raised in London, you know, the London cab drivers do the knowledge, as we all know, and are amazing and brilliant and means that you can get in and just tell them where you're going. And that's the end of that conversation. Then you start talking about the weather and the prime minister and stuff. No, not here. You get in a taxi here and it's like, oh, where is that? Can you tell me where it is? Can you point me in the right direction? Oh, who are you again? You know, you've booked in or they don't turn up or they turn up really late. It's just a mess. Absolutely a mess. And, you know, my husband can attest that sadly Auckland, the big city, isn't much better than where we live. So <laughs> are you still with me on this? <laughs> you know, I think some of this, you know, as hard as it is to say, because I adore this country, I can't emphasize that enough. But at the same time, there's a bit of me that wishes, you know, I wish someone had told me about some of this stuff before I got here. It would have really helped just to set my expectation level. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of really why I'm sharing this stuff really, just to, just to share my experience really. Um, okay. Another good thing is the restaurants. The standard of restaurant, um, food is amazing. I've not, I don't think I've had a bad meal yet, you know, eating out. It's just incredible. The standard is just really high. I'd say way higher than the UK, way, way, way higher. However, the not so great side, if you want to cook for yourself and you go to your supermarket, mm, Okay. Um, well, where do I start with that? So firstly, there's no Waitrose. So, you know, I'm never going to be happy, right? <laughs> Waitrose being my spiritual home, someone once told me. <laughs> it's not real. <clears throat> but the point is, you know, <clears throat> if you, again, it's about the standards and the expectations that you've come to know and love. And in Britain, of course, we've got quite healthy competition in that, in that sector. Uh, you got, you know, you got your cheap supermarkets, you got your little, you got your Tesco or whatever, and then you got your waitress, you got a mix, you've got options here again, not so much. And generally it doesn't matter whether you're paying more or not, you're going to get the same sort of, I would say kind of substandard, not just in terms of, um, the cost versus the quality. So the cost of food is like way, way, way high. And the standard is generally good, but sometimes it's terrible. So you don't, you know, it's, it's very hit and miss in my view. And I know, you know, some people will probably have a lot to say about this, but this is my experience, okay? And I'm comparing it to, to being in Britain where even if you go to Tesco's, the standard is gonna be pretty uniform, at least it was in my time um, across the board. It doesn't really matter what you're buying or what, you, you know, you, you know you're getting a certain level regardless. Whereas here, and of course, that's to do with the location. We are isolated, you know. So, for example, things go off really fast. You know, just fruit and veg and certain things are just not going to be as fresh and as perky because they've probably travelled miles. We tend to, you know, we've got the perfect landscape to, to grow so much food. A lot of things are imported in. Um, so, you know, there is that. And the cost is just out of this world. Again, when we got here, the food bills, our shopping bills were shocking to us utterly shocked it still shocked me now to some extent but I've got used to it um and you know you need to be ready for that so if you're not like someone who's super rich or you're you know and we're we're fortunate we're certainly not struggling and certainly not in the levels that many many people are in this country there's a lot of poverty here there's a lot of kind of a big divide between the haves and the have-nots that's a huge problem there's a lot of children who go really hungry and and don't have lunch and just just that's kind of across you know i'm talking big numbers here it's not just in pockets of communities around the country it's a big issue here so a lot of people are struggling to pay for their food and the cost of food and things here so the answer to that is in my view grow your own if you can and i'm really lucky that i can so i'm doing that but but yet again it was just a kind of shock to the system in terms of the cost of food versus what i'm used to and the quality i'm used to getting and the the, the choice paradoxically um yeah it, that was a bit of a shock to the system uh let's put it that way so i want to end on some positives guys and um yeah I, I do hope this has been useful and maybe a bit enlightening um so what i will say in conclusion is that you know ultimately 
never say never and you never know one day i may decide or we may decide that we want to return to the uk with all its problems with brexit with all the stuff going on maybe we'll make that decision one day at the moment in this moment for today what i can say is that i can never imagine leaving this place I love, I love New Zealand so much. I'm so honoured and blessed to be here. It's an amazing country and I've only just touched the surface. So you can add that into the kind of pinch of salt with the, you know, for this whole entire video, because I accept that I've only seen, you know, really a tiny percentage of the country so far. We haven't been here that long. Um, and it's obviously based on my experience of what I have seen, but yeah, um, honestly, it's a magical land. It's so beautiful. The people are exceptional in their humanity and kindness and love. Aroha is the word for love in Te Reo Māori. I love that word. And, and you feel it here, you know, kids still walk around barefoot quite often. Uh, it's really laid back. Um, it's just really friendly generally. Um, I mean, that varies, that varies depending on where you live. And certainly, you know, some of my, for example, my patients, for example, who are, are, are transgender may not agree with some of those statements because they do not always have an easy time anywhere, but particularly in the smaller part, the smaller towns, for example, in New Zealand, it can be quite, um, um hostile to people who anyone who's a bit different anyone who's you know either you know gender diverse or of different origin color you know and it's subtle that's the other thing about that it's very subtle it's no way you're gonna necessarily well i've had, heard some not very nice stories which i won't go into today but um generally it's very subtle it's just a feeling um and you know racism for example is everywhere so you know that's there's no exception you'll find it here too but on the whole and in general, you know, it's it's just extraordinary what I've experienced in terms of the welcome and the love. And just something that's very difficult to put your finger on that, that makes this place utterly magical. And it's paradise, you know, in so many ways. And uh, yeah, so yeah you're gonna have to do your research before you arrive if particularly if you're a brit in terms of a lot of brits there was a time i was speaking to a kiwi um just someone just recently the other day a kiwi person telling me he remembered that recent in recent years people were coming in waves from britain and then swiftly going back and i think some of the things that i've touched on today would have been the deal breakers for some of those people and that's fine of course you know everything isn't for everyone you know we know that but I think some of these things that I've touched on are a bit of a shock to the system. For example, the, the central heating, the lack, lack thereof, um, can be a bit of a shock to you. And culturally, um, there's so much to think about. So I highly encourage you to do, you know, really in-depth research as much as you can. If you've got questions and, and ideas or thoughts, or if you are thinking about immigrating to New Zealand, feel welcome to put, you know, your question or comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think um yeah and uh be respectful be kind uh, anyone who's disrespectful and rude you know you will be blocked and and deleted and whatever you know every any means i have to to get rid of that because there's no need for that um I'm, i've been honest about owning my biases um and i'm just sharing from my experience and i hope some of that was useful to some of you watching my darlings i send you my love and blessings and good wishes for your day and i look forward to seeing you again in the next vlog Bye.